do you want to learn blender and are you looking for the right tutorial but are unable to find one and all the tutorials that you come across are too complex or even though they are for beginners they just seem too complex to make so if that's something that you're struggling with well I have the perfect video for you and not only that i'm also going to show you how to create this 3d table in blender so with that being said let's begin first things first when you open a blender this is the page that you will see now just click anywhere around here and uh, this will go away now the thing over here that we need to know is that over here is our scene and right now we have three different elements now over here you will see that these are the elements that we have so whatever you have in your scene will basically appear over here so right now we have camera we have a cube and light so this is the camera this is the cube and this is the light what we're going to do with this well we're going to select all of these and in order to select all of these all you need to do is press a on the keyboard and then the next thing that you need to do is just press delete on your keyboard well why would you do that like right why would i do that well because i want to make things simple remember this is a simple tutorial and we're going to just keep things simple we don't need these things right now just to distract us we just need a clean scene okay now before we move ahead i want you to go over to edit and over here you will find this preferences just click on this and this will open up this window now go over here to the key map and you will see this option that says select with mouse button and for me this is set at left i can also set it at right but for ease of use i am using the left one and this is default in blender 4.1 so if you're somebody who's used to the right one well that's up to you but i'm the i'm using the left one so i just want to make that very clear so left click is where you're going to select things from and right click is just this now the next thing that we need to know is how to add something to your scene now the way to do that is by simply pressing shift and make sure you keep the shift button pressed on your keyboard and then you also press a on the keyboard and then leave that and you will be able to see this window over here and this is basically how you get access to adding different things to your scene i want you to focus only on the mesh at the moment don't look at these different things just focus on the mesh and then over here we have many different things like cube circle and all of these things but right now i want you to focus on the plane just focus on the plane and hit left click on the mouse and this is how you can add different things to the scene now right now we just added a plane but this is the same way if you want to add a cube a circle whatever but right now like i said i just want you to focus on the plane so the next thing is how to actually move around in blender well it is very simple so right now if you press your scroll wheel on the mouse and keep it pressed and then move your mouse you will be able to move around in blender basically that's how you move around but there's also one other thing which is very useful and before we get to that we also need to understand how to zoom in and zoom out well that's the same thing by using the mouse scroll wheel so just use the scroll wheel to zoom in and then also zoom out so that's how simple it is so right now if we zoom in and i just want you to understand one thing that if we zoom in and zoom out we're just going to zoom in and zoom out in the same space we can't zoom in let's say somewhere around here if i press zoom in over here even though my mouse was there but it did not work we still moved in the same direction as we did before but how do we actually move to let's say this point how can we move over there well you if you see an icon over here that's that's a hand icon so all you need to do is just hover over it and it says move the view and that's exactly what we're going to do so right now let's just zoom in and let's say i want to move over here so what you need to do is just press this go over to this hand icon and then press this and then move around with your mouse and now you will be able to move around you know we're able to get from there to here and now if we zoom in well that's how you are able to move around in blender so once again if you want to come back well that's how you do it you use the hand 
So this is the basic movement in Blender, but there is also one other amazing thing, which is different kinds of views. So for example, if you want the top view, you need to press this Z. Now you can simply press Z from here. You can simply just click on your mouse, left click, and this will take you to the view from the top. So if I do that, well, this is the view that we get. And we also have X. So if you press this one, this will take you to X and then Y will take you to Y. But there are there are also keyboard shortcuts. So if you hover over it, let's say the Z, you will see that there is a shortcut that says numpad 7. So if you press numpad, the 7 key on the numpad, you will be you will get the same view. And let's say we want to do it for the X axis. Well, we can do that by simply pressing 3 on the numpad. And there you go. We're in the X axis view, let's say, or we're viewing the X axis. And we can do the same thing for Y by pressing 1 on the numpad. And that's it. But how do we get back to our original place where we were before? Like, we don't want that right now, right? We don't want this right now. But, so how do we get back to normal? Well, you need to use your mouse scroll wheel once again. Make sure you press it and then move around. Well, you're back to where you were. So this, these are just some of the basic ways to move around in Blender. I just wanted to make sure that we covered this before moving on. All right, so now starts the fun part. Okay, whatever we did before was just boring stuff, but now is something that you really need to focus on. So this is where it begins. So let me just hide myself. And now I will show you how you can actually add to this plane. What, what can we do with this plane? Like imagine what you can do with this plane, right? Well, you can't because you don't know that, right? So I'm going to show you. So over here, you will see that we have some settings for the plane and we have the location, rotation, and you know, basic stuff, you know that. And this is in the object properties. Now there are different panels for this. And also one more thing, one important thing is that how do you know your plane is selected? You know, think about it. How do you know the plane is selected? Well, you will see a boundary of a yellow line appearing besides it. And if I press or left click somewhere else, you will see that it is gone now. But if I press or left click on my mouse on this object, on this plane, you will see that it is highlighted once again. And it will also get highlighted over here. So this is how you basically select different things. Now back to where we were. So over here, you will see we have another tab that, that's called modifiers. So click on that. And right now you will get this option, add modifier. Now click on this and this will give you different options. Now just go over to generate and over here you will get option for solidify. Don't look at anything else, just focus on solidify and then click on it. Now what this will do is, let me just move this right here and you already know how to move around so I'm not gonna do go over that again. You can just go back and see how, how to do that. Right now, just focus on this part, okay? This is the thickness of the plane that we have. And over here, you will see we have this solidify modifier and we have the option for thickness. Now, if I increase this, here you will see that this is also increasing. Awesome, right? So I'm just going to set this to 0 0.05 for now. And now what? Well, I'm back. And now I'm going to show you that we need to move this up. So basically, the one thing you need to understand is that we are working in 3D, right? And we need to make sure where our scene is or where our objects are placed, basically. So if you press one on your keyboard and you zoom in by using your mouse scroll wheel, you will see that there is a line over here, the red line, okay? This is a red line over here, as you can see, and there is also a blue line. The blue line represents the Z axis, and the red line represents the x-axis and the yellow one or the green one over here represents the y one so there you can see well let's just go back to our x1 and now what we need to do is make sure you select your plane and you will see that it is below this line so we need to make sure this is above the line well how do we do that how do we move around well it's very simple 
all you need to do is just make sure your plane is selected and hit G on the keyboard. Now, what this G key does is it allows you to move around, select your object and move them around. But there is a better way of doing that, moving around is that, okay, you've already pressed the G button. That's good, the G key on the keyboard, but you also need to now press the Z key on the keyboard. Just press Z on the keyboard. And now if you move around with your mouse, you will be able to move in a Z direction. Okay, so now you can place this using the Z direction right above the line that we have over here, the green line that we have over here. So this will now show us that our plane is above the, the area that we can actually view. We don't want it to be in the negative direction. We want it to be right there on the top. So this is how you do that. Now, of course, there are other ways to move around as well. You can select this and press G on the keyboard just like we did before, but this time, let's say we want to move in the X direction. So you can press X on the keyboard and this will allow you to move in the X direction. Well, right now I just moved around and in order to undo something, we want it to be back at where we were. I just messed this up. So we want to be back at our original position. So just press Control Z and we're, we're back. Now in the Y direction, we can also move in the Y direction, but I guess you already guessed it, but for the sake of just showing you let's just press g once again and then y this time on the keyboard and now we're able to move in the y direction well again i just moved it around and now i'm going to press Control z to undo and these are the basic movements of how you can move around different objects in blender so now i'm going to add something else to the plane that we have but in order to do that i need to go undercover real quick so now make sure you have your plane selected and we're able to access this modifiers tab go ahead and just make this uh you know small because we're not going to work with that so make sure that you just make it small because we're going to add something else it's not necessary i'm just doing it so that it, it is easy for you to follow along now add modifier click on that of course left click on the mouse and go over to generate and then over to bevel now select bevel now i told you not to look at anything else but now we're going to look at something else which is called bevel so just the bevel nothing else just click on the bevel and now if you move around right here and you zoom in well you'll see that we get some edges over here well you can go over here and this is the bevel property over here you can go over to segments and then increase this and the more you increase this the more smooth the more smooth this will become now i'm going to just keep this at three and this is the kind of shape that this will give so now we need to duplicate this why do we need to duplicate this you will know i will of course tell you you will understand it but right now we need to duplicate it and how do we do that how do we duplicate something all you need to do is just press shift just like we did before keep, make sure you keep it pressed and also now hit d on the keyboard d so shift d is how you duplicate it right now i'm not doing anything but you will see that nothing happened but something did happen well we got a duplicate of our plane of course we can't see it right now because it's the same at the same position and at the same size as our plane so in order to resize this just hit S on the keyboard and now we will be able to resize this. You can use the mouse around to resize this. And I'm going to make it really small like this. And once you're done selecting the resize and you're like, okay, I'm going to resize it up to this point. All you need to do is just left click on the mouse and that's it, you're done. So now that we're done with the duplicate, I want to show you something. So over here, you will see we have a object mode. So if you click on this, this will open up the panel. There are many different modes. You can see edit mode, sculpt mode, vertex paint, whatever. Right now for this video, all I want you to focus on is the object mode and the edit mode. Why we're not focusing on the other ones? Well, that's not the scope of this tutorial. We will have some other tutorial for it, but 
for the object mode and the edit mode these are some basic things we need to go over them in order to create this so of course you can just select the edit mode by going over here and selecting edit mode but there is also a shortcut key that you can use so the shortcut key is tab hit tab on your keyboard and well you can see we are in the edit mode now always focus on which mode you are because sometimes you don't really know which mode you are you might be just editing and you might forget to exit the edit mode go into the object mode or you're already in the object mode and something's not working so make sure whatever mode that i have right now or whatever mode that i have throughout this next phase of the tutorial make sure that you have that as well because otherwise you might not get the same result so this is a important thing that you need to focus on okay and also you can go back to the object mode by pressing tab once again so tab is the basic shift between edit and object mode so now make sure that you are in the edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard just make sure you can just always look over here in order to make sure where you are so i press tab to get into the edit mode and now i'm going to zoom in now over here if i mouse use my mouse to click somewhere you will see that okay well first this was selected but now it's not being able to select i'm not able to select this why what just happened like is is there a problem no need to worry no need to panic because i'm going to show you something i'm going to tell you something right now what we're doing is we're trying to select this and this is a plane remember this is just a plane now when we're working with plane or any object and when we're in the edit mode we usually or you know sometimes want to select the face of the plane okay we sometimes want to select the vertex as you can see you can just select the vertex like this or even click on that and this will get selected you can even get press shift and you know select two of them at the same time or even control and select multiple of them but we don't want to do that right now we just want to select the whole plane the whole thing how do we do that well in order to do that press three on your keyboard three the number three and now if you click over here force left mouse click you will be able to select it well that's it that's what we wanted to do but now what like of course okay we have selected it now what what can we do like what can you possibly do with the plane right that's what you might be thinking right that's what you might be thinking but i'm going to blow your mind because now while you have this selected press e on the keyboard press e on the keyboard and now move around your mouse and oh my god what just happened what did we accomplish we are able to extrude this is called extrusion basically you know it's simple nothing like too fancy i know this is your first day or this is the beginner tutorial but isn't it amazing to have this right well this is the basic table the shape of the table so it's up to you wherever you want to place it i'm just going to place it somewhere around here well and once you're done with the sizing you can just left click your mouse so everything in order to select and you know then get done with it just use the left mouse click basically i know i'm saying the left mouse click again and again well that's just i wanted to make it beginner friendly but i think it's too friendly now <laughs> so i'm gonna avoid that from now on all right so far so good well you're in for some action now you can use this mouse in order to move up a little bit and then zoom in a little bit so that we can view the top over here now remember we already had the three selected which basically allows us to select the faces so right now if you click over here this will select this face of this object plane and if you select this well you get the point right now we want to select the one at the top okay just select the one at the top and now press shift d in order to duplicate it now what this does is it only duplicates the face the front face or the you can say the top face that we just selected of our plane now we need to scale it in order to do that like we did before we hit s on the keyboard s for snake and uh, let's just zoom or you know move our mouse in order to increase this and let's just keep this somewhere around uh, here somewhere around here up to you it's, uh, like it's up to you where you want it to be but that's it 
we have the top view of the table done. All right, so now we're going to add the legs of this table. <laughs> you know, the ones at the side. I don't know what you call them, but let's just call them legs for now. <laughs> so how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the same technique that we did just now. We're going to select this top view and we're going to duplicate shift D, scale S, snake, and then, you know, move this down using our mouse. So we're reducing the size of this. So I think somewhere around here looks fine. And now, now let's move into the top view. Remember how to get into the top view, the Z axis over here? Well, you can use numpad seven to do that. Okay, we're at the top view. Now what? Well, we're going to position this right here at the corner. You can choose any corner if you want. I'm using, I'm going to choose this corner over here. Now, remember the same things, and this is good for you to practice. What you can do is, in order to move around, just select G on the keyboard. And of course, we have this plane selected. That's why we're doing it. So select G on the keyboard and now X on the keyboard. And let's move this right here. So you can see this makes it much more easier in order to place the object. Once again, select G and then Y and then move this right here. Well, this is it. We're done. So now what? Now what do we do? Well, we need to extrude this as well. Just like we did with the plane. Remember, we created the table by extruding it, pressing E. We're going to do the same thing. So while we have this selected, we're going to press E. E for X. Just move this down and uh, let's place this somewhere around, let's say here. And if we view this, it looks fine. So just move around with the mouse. Remember, once again, we pressed E. We made sure that we had our plane selected, that duplicate of the plane selected. And we hit E on the keyboard and then we extruded it downwards. So here we have our first leg the first leg of the table and it looks fine i'm not going to do much with it but the next thing we need to do is over here you will see toggle x-ray just click on that and you will be able to see the different sides of this leg even the table as well but just focus on this leg over here right now just select any part of it and hit L on the keyboard, L for lemon. So hit L on the keyboard and go over here to the modifiers and click on add modifier, then go over to generate and then hit mirror. So select this mirror over here. And now what this will do is you'll see that this added this leg over here as well. Well, let me just hide this bevel one over here and just focus on the mirror modifier. And if you press Y on the axis, just look at the screen and see what happens. And there you go. You will see that we have legs added in the background as well. Or you can say the, those sides as well. So this is how you can, you know, add an object and create a duplicate of it in a way. And we have our legs. So now just click on this toggle X-ray once again, and we will be back to our original position. So there you go looks perfect so we have our basic structure of the table done okay listen listen alert this is an alert this is a very important message make sure that you save whatever you have done so far so in order to do that just press Control s and that's it you will be able to save it save it anywhere you want but just just make sure that you save it please make sure that you save it this was a very important step you just had to do it please make sure to always save your files otherwise it's going to be a disaster hey just tell me something what do you know about a table like for example we have a table and what kind of things does it have what properties do does a table have it has a, a top a sides it has legs well think about it what else can it have well it does have drawers right it can have drawers so let's go ahead add a drawer so i'm going to show you how to do that now okay now make sure you're already in the edit mode 
and you select this. And if you're able to select this, this means that the three button was pressed and you haven't turned that off. But in case it is you're unable to press this, just make sure you hit three once again. But don't do that if if this is if you can select this. You know, if this is being selected, just don't do that. And now what you need to do is make sure you press Control R and keep that pressed, keep that pressed until you move around and you see these lines appearing and stop where you see this kind of a line so make sure it's like a square rectangle kind of a line appearing and hit click left click on your mouse and now you will be able to position this so make sure you left click once again because this was already in the center so no need to move around too much and this is basically the loop cut this is the loop cut and this is how we're going to be able to get our drawer so now we need to select these two sides. So how do we do that? If you press right now, if you click right now, it won't be you won't be able to select it, which is because we need to press three again on our keyboard. So remember, whenever you are unable to select anything, just press three on the keyboard. Basically, the plane. When you're unable to select the face of anything, any object, make sure you hit three on the keyboard. So right now we can select the planes once again, the face of the planes once again, and now. We need to select both of these at the same time. How do we do that? Well, you press shift and select both. So there you go. Hit I on the keyboard. And now if you move around, you will see that you're able to move this. And before you left click, make sure you hit I once again. And this time it will give us a separation in the middle as well. So just Keep it at somewhere where it seems right to you. I'm just going to keep it at this and just left click on your mouse. And now make sure that these are selected and hit S on the keyboard. And this time we're going to scale this right here. So this is how the drawer looks at the moment. And now once again, don't do anything. Don't select anything else. Make sure these two things are selected and hit E on the keyboard the same one we'd use for extrude and this time we're going to slightly move this out just slightly don't do don't overdo it just slightly move this out like this and if you zoom in you will be able to see that it, it is giving us that drawer shape so now you can just select anything else and now you see this is how it looks okay so now we need to add the knobs as well right how can we open a drawer if it doesn't have a knob well, there are some drawers which don't have any handle or knob, but ours does have it. And I'm going to show you how to add it. So right now, we need to exit the edit mode. We need to get back to the object mode. So hit tab on the keyboard and make sure we're back to the object mode. If you think the tab is difficult for you, you can just go over here and do it from here. So right now, this is how the object looks. Everything looks. The whole drawer looks at the moment. Now, we're going to add another object. But this time, we need to add the knob over here. So it could be something like a sphere. We need to add a sphere. But in order to add a sphere right here, because right now, if I add any object, if you see this icon over here, basically, the object will get added right where this point is. So in order for us to get that object wherever we want, we can move this point around and that object will get added right there so let's move this right here and how do we do that well make sure you press shift keep that pressed on your keyboard and right click where you want this to be so somewhere around here looks fine and there you go this is how you can move this around so it moved from here to here now we're going to add a sphere so press shift a in order to get that menu and you know it's been a long time since we saw this one we only used one uh, plane from the mesh and that was it we did not add anything else so that's why you will see that we only have this just two planes right here so right now we're going to once again shift a to get this menu go over to mesh and this time select uv sphere well what just happened what just happened well i'm just kidding with you if you zoom out this is basically our sphere so it basically covered everything it the size was large, so 
we need to just reduce it. So now we, we already have this selected. Now all we need to do is hit S on the keyboard and just move this right here. And you can zoom in now and once again S on the keyboard and right here. Okay, this looks perfect, but as you will see that this does not look very good. It seems like it's stuck in the drawer. The knob is stuck in the drawer. How do we open that? Yes, you you won't be able to open the drawer like this. I won't be. So how do we make it accessible? Well, just select it once again, and this time hit G on the keyboard. Remember G to move around, and hit Y on the keyboard because we want to move this in the Y direction. Now, of course, it might take some time for you to understand the Y, Z, but if you follow this along, you might be you might get better at it just by following this tutorial. Now, just slightly move this out in a way that it's looking okay and it looks like a knob so this looks fine this looks fine for now and now we need to duplicate this because we need to add one at the bottom as well so select this and what do we do for duplicate shift d and hit g because we need to move it and now hit c because we need to move it downwards which is possible in the z axis so just slightly move this and place this right here in the center so now we have the perfect alignment between the two so this is it this is how you can add the knobs in your drawers as well so our drawer is done and if you have made it this far congratulations you have done an amazing job now just the final touches just the coloring and you know just the random stuff that we do just to make it you know as the final product but it won't be overwhelming I'm just follow along it won't be very difficult to do because the difficult stuff is done like it's done all left to do is just basic coloring and just the final output so now we're going to add a light in our scene but before we do that I want to show you something I want to show you some panels so over here right now we're in the solid mode and this is the basic solid mode but there is also a wireframe mode and of course it has its you know use cases we did not use it in this video but i'm just showing you that this is the wireframe mode and then we also have this shading mode but we did not use any thing like that but the final thing we need to focus on right now is the render one so if you go over to the render one you will see that like nothing is visible anymore why is that because in the render mode we need to also make use of the light in the scene so the render mode needs some sort of a light in order to you know display anything so how do we do that well right now just go back to the solid mode make sure you're following this panel over here make sure you keep an eye out which one i'm selecting and it, it will be easy to select because if you hover over it you will be able to see which one uh it, it is so right now in the solid mode we're going to add a light right now i'm going to first of all move this point over here because this is where the light will get added if i add it so shift right click shift right click well this is where it looks fine and you will see if you move around this is where the light will appear if you want this to appear somewhere up you can do that right here so over here we want the light to appear now how do we actually add the light well we're going to do the same thing the same technique is in order to add anything in your scene is shift a and over here now you are allowed to look at different things so of course we have camera like so many other things but right now we need to go over to the light now if you go over to the light you will see that there are different kinds of lights point light sunlight spotlight but the one that we need is the area light so if you click on this you will see that this is the area light that just got added on now it's time for me to hide myself and show you how to scale this so if you go over here and you will see that okay there is a x scale you can just increase it from here from here and you know the z one is not necessary at the moment but you can do that from here you can scale this up so 
let's just go with five by five let's say you know just make it as big as possible so that this covers more area than the plane itself and now go over to the data over here and over here you will see that there is an option called power so if you increase this this will increase the power of the light so right now i'm just going to keep this at 100 just to show you how this looks you won't be able to see it right here but if you go over to the render here you will see now we are able to view that so right now if i just hide this you will see that nothing shows so it depends on the light so you need to add a light to your scene in order to view it in this render mode so over here you will see it looks fine but right now if i increase the power so you will see that this is now looking more visible so it depends on the power of the light right now i'm just going with 300 300 works fine for me and now what you can do is start coloring so select this and this will select the plane and this plane is basically the whole table now select it select the table and go over here to the material and over here you will be able to add material or you can say the color to this so click on new and over here we have this option called base color and if you click on this and change the color you will see the color of our table changing so i'm going to go over to this hex and i'm going to add a color code myself and this is the color code that i'm using you of course you can copy this if you want to or you can use any other color if you want and now i'm going to select the sphere over here and once again in the material i'm going to click on new and in the base color for this one i'm going with this color code and of course i'm going to do the same thing for the other sphere as well so there you go this is how the color of these two look so for the final thing which is this plane we're going to once again go over to new and this time the base color i'm using is this one so a bluish kind of color and we're done with our color so now we will add a camera to our scene how else will we be able to view anything if we don't have a camera right so we need a camera and in order to add a camera once again shift a and here you can spot the camera right here so if you click on this here you will see the camera is now visible and it is also showing over here now right now you don't know how this view looks through the lens of the camera so in order to look through the lens of the camera you need to press zero on the numpad and this is what the camera is basically viewing at the moment and this is not what we want we want the camera to be showing our table so just use your mouse scroll wheel to move and then you will be able to exit the this camera mode now what we can do is just slightly move this here and make sure you select your camera now you can move this around by using g you can use g and this time i'm not doing the x and y because i also want to show you that you can do this freely you don't necessarily need to use the x y or z as well you can just hit g on the keyboard and then move the object around in a freestyle way so somewhere around here looks fine no we need to move this around again and this looks fine so now let's see what the camera is showing awesome now it looks fine but now you will see that in our camera view this will also appear so how do we hide that well we can just simply move our plane around and this time just select your plane hit g on the keyboard and x so that we can move this in the x direction and also now just right uh, now just click anywhere and then once again hit g and then y and then move this right here somewhere around here and now what you can do is hit s on the keyboard and scale this up so that the camera is able to view only this whole scene and now let's go over and select zero on our numpad so that we can see how the camera is what the camera is showing basically but now we need to change some settings over here so if you go over make sure this camera is selected now you can select this from here as well go over here and then 
go over to this object mode and from here you can change the transformation as well so z and y this looks fine at the moment but now go back to data and then decrease or increase this focal length in order to position your camera in order to basically zoom in so over here it looks fine for me and i'm going to go back to the object and then change the y a little bit so z a little bit so all right so this is it this is how you can position camera in your scenes and since we're just you're going to use this as an image we're not just we're not going to animate anything at the moment we just wanted to create this learn how to create this and just simply get a, an image as a result so we just need to position the camera of according to how we want this image to appear but of course if this was an animation you can move camera around right now since this is an image we don't need to do that so this is the basic settings of the camera at the moment now the final step now you can go over here and just select anywhere make sure nothing is selected and now we need to go over to this render over here now if you go over to the render you will see we have a render engine now change this to cycles and this is where the fun begins this is where you will see that okay this is how it looks so if you scroll down and go over here to color management over here you need to change the look to high contrast so change this and this will give you a high contrast from here and this is basically all you need to do in this render panel but you'll see that we're getting black color over here and the reason is you need to go back to the camera which is the area in this case and now you need to go over here to the data and unselect cast shadows and this will be gone and this is how our image looks so we're done now all you need to do is just render this now go over here to this render panel and select render image now once you will select this this will open up this panel and now this will take some time to render but after it has been rendered you can go over here to the image and then click save as and then you will be able to save this anywhere as a png or jpeg file so this was it for this tutorial i hope you found this useful and i would like to hear your feedback on this was it difficult was it easy to follow what do you think about it let me know in the comments and i'll see you in the next video